All right, we are live on online platforms with 10 Tampa Bay. Thank you everyone for joining. I am David Shealy. The 2023 Tampa Bay Buccaneers schedule just dropped fresh off the presses at eight. We're going to take a look at some things, some very early notes on this schedule. So Tampa Bay is playing opponents that had a combined record of 138, 148 in two last year, which means they weren't very good. It's the 11th easiest schedule in the NFL when you take a look at last year's win percentage of the opponents. They also are only going to play five playoff teams. I don't know if that's really an, an only out of the 17 games. There are going to be 14 playoff rematches in this upcoming season. None of them played by the Buccaneers, so they will not see the Cowboys, but they are indeed playing five playoff teams. I can tell you those teams right now. It's the Eagles, who won the NFC, played in the Super Bowl, the 49ers, the Vikings, the Bills, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're going to talk about some of those games just a little bit later. There's a look at all those playoff teams there for you right now. Now, something really different about this year is that these games were considered free agents. They were up for grabs by the different networks. Typically, kind of old school was NFC teams, NFC games played on Fox. If an AFC team traveled on the road, then they would bring CBS with them to that network. And if an NFC team traveled on the road to play an AFC team, then Fox would travel uh, with them. But now it's a little bit different. And so I don't know if, if this has happened before, but seven of Tampa Bay's games this year will air right here on 10 Tampa Bay. Never really seen that or heard of that before, but 10 games that the Bucks are playing this year, or excuse me, seven games that they play this year will be on 10 Tampa Bay, including the week one game in Minnesota against the Minnesota Vikings. That's going to be on September the 10th, 1 p.m. right here on 10 Tampa Bay. Actually, they're playing their first three games on three completely different networks, so you'll just keep on flipping. But you're going to be on 10 Tampa Bay a lot this year with seven games played there. Uh, let's move on and talk about the primetime games. So during the Brady era, there was plenty of night games to be played because it's Tom Brady and there's a lot of appeal there. So in 2020, Tampa Bay played four primetime games. And then for the past two seasons each, they had the max of five primetime games. This year, first year post Tom Brady, now Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask at the helm, only two primetime games. And the appeal is really the other team, respectfully. We're talking about the Philadelphia Eagles, week three at Ray J, Monday night football, kicking off at 7:15, part of a doubleheader. And then week eight in Buffalo against the Bills, Thursday night football, 8:15 p.m. And that potentially could be a cold weather game. I mean, when you look at this schedule, we're gonna go over the full thing in just a little bit. But there hasn't been a lot of cold weather games in Tampa Bay's recent history. The coldest game they've played was probably the NFC Championship game in uh, Green Bay against the Packers. That might have been the coldest game they've played in the past five years. It potentially could be colder than that on December 17th when the Bucks go to Green Bay to play the New Look Packers without Aaron Rodgers this time. Other than that, it might be cold week 18 against Carolina in Carolina. Uh, it might be cold in San Francisco week 11, November 19th. Uh, it might be cold over there, but other than that, the only real cold weather game is the Green Bay Packers on the road right before Christmas and then week 18 in Carolina. It might be cold in Buffalo late, like, like, uh, late October. I, I'm not totally sure, but the Bucs have pretty been, uh, they've been pretty fortunate avoiding those, those cold weather games, but these are the only primetime games on the schedule. That, that's, that's all we've got so far. When you're playing a bunch of bad teams, Basically, that means you're playing the teams that had top draft picks. And the Buccaneers are in a very unique situation this year when it comes to the NFL draft. Ten of the top 13 NFL draft picks are on the Buccaneers schedule this year, including each of the top four. Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson Jr., and Anthony Richardson. They will all be playing Tampa Bay this year. All four of them. You're going to see Bryce Young twice, of course, Will Anderson and C.J. Stroud, and then Richardson. Those are going to be road games. Unfortunately, they will not be coming to Ray J. I, I would be pretty jealous of the Falcons and the Panthers because they're the teams that are going to be hosting the Colts and Texans, but it'll be the Saints and Bucks having to go to those stadiums and play these guys. So that's going to be uh, a look at that. Some of the other rookies, because these are some names now. So, of course, we talked about Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, 
Anderson and Richardson, but also Bijan Robinson. The Falcons are going to see Bijan Robinson drafted eighth overall by the Falcons. Going to see the Falcons twice. Jalen Carter with the Eagles on that Monday night football. Darnell Wright with the Chicago Bears. Peter Skoronsky with the Titans. Jameer Gibbs with the Lions. And Lucas Van Ness with the Packers. Those are the top rookies that the Bucks are going to face this season. And most of them will be coming to Ray J. You're going to see Bryce Young at Ray J. You're going to see Bijan Robinson at Ray J. As are Jalen Carter, Darnell Wright, Peter Skaronsky, and Jameer Gibbs. All of their respective teams will be coming to Tampa Bay to play the Buccaneers. So that is uh, one of the interesting parts of the schedule. I don't know if it's a really good or bad thing because, I mean, these are rookies, but sometimes rookies come into the league and they start tearing things up. I, I really think it's going to be exciting to watch Tampa Bay take on C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young with the defense that they have. So there's a lot of interesting things to find on this schedule. Let's go ahead and take a look at the full schedule. So we're going to tear this down here. We're going to end this and pull back up the full schedule right here. So bring this on over. Here is the full 2023 Tampa Bay schedule. Uh, three preseason games. Of course, that's the new format with 17 regular season games. So three preseason games, two of them at Raymond James Stadium, beginning August 11th against the Pittsburgh Steelers, going uh, to the Jets. I don't know if Aaron Rodgers is really going to play that game. And then the Baltimore Ravens will come to Ray J Saturday, August 26th. So week one, at the Vikings on 10 Tampa Bay, week two hosting the Bears, and then Monday night football week three against the NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles. That's going to be a really tough matchup. Going to New Orleans on the first day of October, that's going to be a 1 o'clock game and a really early bye week, something to really watch here. Week five bye, it's pretty early, but... It is what it is. The schedule makers made that decision, and you just kind of got to deal with it. No trips to Germany this year, though, so that might be a pretty good thing. Back-to-back -back home games coming out of the bye against the Lions. So Jameer Gibbs this game. Then you've got Bijan Robinson this game. Uh, and then Thursday night. So right after that, you're going right back on the road, quick turnaround to Buffalo to play the Bills. And then following that, right back on 10 Tampa Bay, taking on the Houston Texans. Then you get to week 10, the Tennessee Titans, week 11 at San Francisco. The Colts, it's a back-to-back -back road game here, and you're playing in different, different time zones. Well, that's a different time zone. The Colts are actually in the eastern time zone. So back-to-back -back road games there, back-to-back -back road games there. You got another set of back-to-back -back road games after you play Carolina on December 3rd. You're going back on the road for two straight weeks, playing on the, taking the Falcons on and the Packers. And then you get two home games straight with the Jaguars and the Saints. And then week 18, at Carolina. No holiday games, really. You got Christmas Eve, you got New Year's Eve. Uh, week 18 is always TBD because they want to make sure the best matchups get attention, matchups with playoff implications. They want those games to get the national stage. So they always leave these open just in case they want to maneuver things around. You don't want to make a judgment just yet on what week 18 is going to look like. But when you look at the schedule, this is kind of the result of number one, you finished in first place. So when you finish in first place, even though you had a losing record, you have to play the first place teams in the other divisions that you're playing. So that is why they're going to run into uh, the 49ers. That's why they're, they're running into the Eagles. They're playing the entire uh, NFC North. They're playing the entire AFC South. But when it comes to the other divisions in the NFC, you're always going to play the team that finished in the same place you finished the year previous. So if the Bucs had finished in second, they'd be playing the second place teams. But because they finished in first, they're playing the first place teams. And we know those first place teams didn't have a losing record like Tampa Bay did. So that is why some of these teams and some of these opponents here are going to be really tough matchups. And it's because, well... They came in first. If the Bucs hadn't come in first, they wouldn't be seeing the Bills. They wouldn't be seeing the Eagles. They, wouldn't even be, they would not even be seeing the 49ers. They wouldn't see those teams. But because they came in first, that's why some of those matchups are there. We don't have any rematches from the preseason. That's one thing personally. I, don't, I can't stand when there's a preseason game and you're going to see that team again. I don't know why that happens sometimes, but luckily there's none of that here. And again, no holiday games, just the two primetime games. Again, that's another result. You had a losing season last year. You don't have Tom Brady. You've got rid of some of that star power when it comes to names on this team. And when that happens, it's not very appealing to the schedule makers. They're not going to give you five primetime games like the Bucs have had the past two seasons. So here it is, the full 2023 Tampa Bay Buccaneers schedule. Week one on the road 
against the Minnesota Vikings, the team that, well, had plenty of one-score games. But so far, the Bucks are seven-point underdogs. The Bucks are seven-point underdogs in this contest, and these Vikings were one-score kings last year. Like, they played a ton of one-score games, and they were winning just about every single one of them right here on 10 Tampa Bay coming up September the 10th. Here it is one more time, the 2023 Tampa Bay Buccaneers schedule. Thank you so much for joining us on our digital platforms. We have more coming up for you tonight on the air on 10 Tampa Bay at 11. We also have the full schedule story up on our website right now at 10tampabay.com.